Hi guys, I'm here with Anthony Lamb from HCB Solar and Anthony has been in the solar game for quite a while and he's also proudly working for a company which is fourth generation. Now, with the solar coaster, many, many companies gone, finding a company that has been in the electrical and the solar game for four generation is quite special. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Marcus. Well, you've got a lot of experience in solar. You're selling it, you're installing it. Uh, you've initially started installation game, then you're moving more into management. What's your role? Yeah, so my uh, my background is I've been an electrician for 11, 12 years now. Um, I started when I was 15, uh, straight out of school, straight into apprenticeship, doing construction work and on homes and commercial, things like that. And I've moved into the solar game back in 2017. Um, that was up in Darwin. So as you can imagine, it's a pretty hot place to installing solar on the roofs and things like that. And I, I learned a lot in Darwin, but I also learned sort of some of the ways not to do solar. So I was working for quite a large company at the time, but um, in terms of how we were doing things there, there's probably not some of the, the right things to do. Mm. Um, and so coming to HCB with a quality company, I learned really the major difference between quality and cheap and and using quality gear so um yeah it's um been been quite a journey lear learning all the solar stuff but I, I love where i am now and mm. now now into management and yeah it's another another trade to learn so trying to manage people but i'm really enjoying it so far mm. so you've been installing solar for quite a few years um isn't it all the same? It's a black panel, it's an <laughs> it's a inverter, I just stick the two together, end of story. Is there a variety? Oh, th theoretically, it's all the same, but in terms of the actual products themselves, they're, they're definitely not the same. You can get a cheap $800 inverter that might last five years if you're lucky, um, or it'll probably fail in five years and one month right after the warranty runs out. Or you can go with a product that it comes with 10 years warranty, but it'll probably last you 25 years. Uh, if installed correctly. So so there's a difference in the price point. What about the installation quality? Oh, the installation quality is um, number one, really. Like if you can install a, a quality product in a, in a crap spot and, yeah, it's it's not going to last the same. If you put a, a high-end quality inverter on a, a north-facing wall, cop in the sun, it's still not going to last as well. So. so is that kind of stuff you look at or is it just hurry, hurry, get it out? No, no. Every job we do is, is well planned out in advance. So once the job's sold, we have an in-house design team that looks after the managing that process of where the inverter is going to go, where the battery is going to go, what way the solar panels are going to go on the roof, making sure that everything is designed from start to finish, that when the guys get there on the day, they have a map in their hands of this is where this is going, this is where this is going. Um, if there's anything that's been missed, the guys are, are well trained in picking that up and going, hang on, this this in location isn't going to work. It's different from the picture. They've actually knocked this wall down and now that's in full sun, something like that. And the, the guys will be able to pick that up, tell us, and we'll replant it on the day. So let's say if I go into Hunter Valley, there are lots of solar companies out there. Um, why would I want to pick HCB Solar? Well, I mean, you could go with the, the cheapest company out there or any one of the, the other companies that have been there for a few years, but... Like I think just in the, the history HCB has, like they've been around since 2008 doing solar, but also since the 19, 1950s doing electrical. So it's a company that's been around for a very long time. We're not going anywhere. When we sell you a product with 25-year warranty, we'll see you in 25 years to be able to service that. 24 months and 24 years and 11 months, we'll be there to claim that warranty for you. Whereas you, you don't know that with a company that just started up a year ago. You just, I mean, eight hundred solar companies have come and gone. Exactly right. So it's it's like it's the industry we're in is there's there's a lot of highs, a lot of lows, but yeah, HCB has been through a lot of them. So, so what's your philosophy? I'm an end customer. You walked in. I'm going. I need solar, but I don't know what else I need. What do you start? What questions do you ask me? I guess why do they want solar? If they they have a really expensive power bill. That's normally the main driver. How do I get my power bill down? Mm. Um, that would be the first step. And then it would be looking at the power bills going, all right, this is how much power you're drawing or importing from the grid. This is what this size system could meet and cover that. But it's not just like if they're out working all day, the solar system isn't going to change that for them. So it's about educating them on their energy use and making sure that they, they use their sort of hydro products during the day. So their dishwashers, their washing machines, setting those things on, timers and things like all these all these stuff have all these products have timers now like air cons you can set it on a timer so if you even if you're out all day at work and you know it's going to be a particularly hot day 
you could set the timer on the aircon to start at 12 o'clock and you can walk in from from work at five o'clock and your house is nice and cool and but it hasn't cost you a cent to run it and you right. can run it entirely for free. So you're saying instead of uh, at six o'clock whacking the aircon full blast for the house that heated during the day, I'm actually setting the timer in the middle of the day to pre-cool it and then at night my bill won't be so high because I don't have to whack the aircon too hard. Oh, absolutely. If you turn the aircon on once the sun's gone down, the solar's not doing anything for you, so you're just paying for it from the grid. So, I mean, th there's not much point in getting a solar system if you're just going to export it all to the grid. The feed-in tariffs now are they're, they're crap. Not there's, there's nothing there. So if you're not going to use it, you're not going to pay the system off, like these payback periods you get given, uh, sort of assuming that you're mm. using that solar system. If you're not using it, you can sort of kiss goodbye to the payback periods there. Right. Yeah. But I mean, uh, there are also people who do work from home now. Yep. They're also pensioners. So if you're actually a person who's at home most of the time, then solar is really a, a very, very good oh, option. You're, you're the best person to get solar. You're going to use all of that solar power. You're going to mm -hmm. consume it all and not, not pay for any electricity. Mm -hmm. so. so when you end up uh, going to a house, have you now found also that you found some older solar systems that already now need replacement? Oh, there's there's loads of them out there. You can sort of see them straight away, you know. Yeah, you, you go to a house, you see these old one and a half, two kilowatt systems mm. and you can probably, like most of those ones would have been installed when the, the 60 cent feed-in tariffs are on and things like that and you wouldn't even use solar power back then. You would, The idea was that you would get the 60 cent feed-in tariff and export everything and capitalise on mm. on that return. Whereas now it's it's shifted because the, the feed-in tariffs aren't there. The, the process has shifted to consuming your energy. So... With those old ones, they're, they're probably not fit for purpose anymore. You probably need a, a larger system that's actually going to meet your energy needs. Do sometimes customers emotionally love their little old system so well that they want you to go and fix it again? Or do if you say, look, it's past its use by day, pull it off, they're okay with it? I think most people understand that technology has changed so much that those older ones just aren't, they're not, not good anymore. They understand that even panels look nicer now than you can get in some nice old all black panels those old blue ones that are covered in bird poop and whatever else, they're probably not <laughs> not the best to look at on the roof. So I think they like they like getting a nice new system on there. Um, do you sometimes still have an old system that actually works and you can put a new system right next to it? Is that works? Yeah, yeah, you can retrofit your systems for sure. Um, they, obviously, it depends on the system and things like that, but if there's still life in the system, there's no reason to rip the whole thing off and start again. You want to get the maximum return off your old system. So you can definitely retrofit newer systems to them and then – incorporate them all into their same monitoring platform and things like that. So so then yeah. you have two systems next to each other because the old ones you are not allowed to add extra panels or anything like that. So you've got to leave the old system in the way it is and then could add an extra brand new one on it. Or you say, look, I want the whole roof space looking the same, not two different looking systems, and then I go all the way with one. Is that the way it is? Yeah, definitely. Well, you wouldn't add old panels to a new system because you, you don't get the rebate or anything like mm. that. So there, there's no point... Um, so you could have a new system on there, but as you said, it, it might look a little bit sort of bad having uh, two different systems on there, one with tiny panels covered in bird mm. crap and mm. the other one nice flash, all black panels. Mm. So, yeah. So sometimes it's just better to start from scratch. Yeah. Again, it comes down to the, the customer's needs. If if mm. that system's working and they only want a, a top up to, to meet their, obviously with power prices going up, they go, oh, my bill's gone up this much. Mm. Can you give me a system that covers that extra? And you go, yeah, of course we can. Mm. So. Mm. Nowadays, uh, what are the customers like? What are they looking for? What are the questions they ask? Oh, you get all sorts. Uh, the majority of customers I find are just looking for a way to save money. Obviously, with the, the climate sort of being as it is, the economy being as it is, a lot of people are just sort of, how do I save money? How do I stop the retailers taking 60 cents for a kilowatt of electricity, things like that? Um so that, those are the majority of customers and, yeah, you're just trying to give them a good solution that, that will last for them and, and give them the return on investment. Um, you also get the customers who are probably a lot smarter than you or I are and they they dive into their, their products and they're asking you all these crazy questions and yeah, it's and asking, I think the good one is the guys that want to manage the API keys with the home automation system and you're just thinking, oh, God, all right, I'll, I'll do my best to help you out and I'm learning as I'm going through the process. So. Right. Yeah. That's the whole thing coming up with smart homes, isn't it? I mean, the, the home itself will be a whole energy epicenter trying to use as much renewables and then reuse it again with the uh, security shutters and the security cameras and 
all the wonderful things that all run via uh, the the apps yeah. and all that. That's what I was going to say. It, One guy had had an app that he was just doing everything from his house with the app and he was watching his battery coming in and he was turning the light on there and opening the roller door there and I was like, holy crap. Right. <laughs> but most customers just want a cheaper bill. Most customers just want a cheaper bill. <laughs> but as I said, I, I love those customers that come in because I'm learning so much off them. Like it's it's pretty cool to see like how far technology is going because I don't hear about these a lot of these things. I'm busy. And then this guy tells me about it and I go, oh, crap, I didn't even it's know that was a thing. It's the latest thing that just got released and here I've got it already. Well, yeah, yesterday it got released and he's <laughs> asking me about it. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> now, um, the, the key questions at the moment, um, some solar installers now sell maybe three batteries out of 10. In some regions, it's a bit less. But uh, what's the whole thing with batteries? A lot of people ask about them, but not as many getting them. Um, yes and no. There's, there's definitely a lot of people asking about them now, but they always ask about it and then go, oh, I'm just not sure if it's worth it yet. Mm. And um, mm. I guess what I try and tell people when they, when they say that is I say, look, the, the best thing is when they've already got a system installed by us, they've got consumption monitoring. So they can say, oh, I'm using a lot of energy between 5 and 10 p.m. at night. And you can look at it and you can sort of work out exactly how much they're using. You go, oh, you're using 10 kilowatt hours of so, or, of energy between this time, but your solar is not covering because there's no sun. So a battery would fit you right here. That's going to save you this peak period of 60 cents a kilowatt hour. And so that's going to save you 10 bucks every night mm. having that battery, mm. which over time adds up quite a lot. So, What about the luxury of having backup and actually having electricity in the house? Um, many people went by battery. Is that the key motivator or they forgot about that advantage? No. So that's still like a primary driver, like especially when we're, we're selling things like Tezzas and stuff like that. That's so there's, there's again, the two different customers. There's the guys that just want to save money on their energy bill, don't care about anything else. But then there's also that caveat that those guys, when they buy a battery, they're like, expect the blackout as well. And so there's a conversation there where, especially with certain battery products, you need to make sure they understand that they are getting blackout or they're not getting blackout. So because, there are batteries that don't give you blackout protection, is Oh, it? of course, yeah. There's plenty of just DC coupled batteries that are just purely for saving power on your, or saving money on your energy bills. Right. So, so they just take it out, maybe when there's electricity cheap, maybe they get it even from the grid, and then when it's expensive, they release it, and that's the function of the battery, but they don't have backup. So you've got to really ask when somebody's selling you a battery that they do have backup. You can't assume it. Yeah, absolutely. If, if, um, yeah, if you're buying a battery and you're not sure, ask the question because a lot of batteries don't come with that as a default option. So you need to make sure that that's being done if, if that's your primary driver. And, I mean, if the battery is very cheap, then maybe in those cases they don't have that, but the sales guy doesn't even tell the end customer and he only finds out during the blackout that he didn't get it. Yeah, you'd be pretty pissed if you, you <laughs> the, the goes into a blackout or you hear the energy company sends you the text, oh, we're doing work in your street, and you go, sweet, I've got a battery, I'm all good, and then all the power goes out, you, you're not going to be happy. And the wife's not going to be happy about all the food in the fridge that she thought you would yep, save for that's her. that's right. <laughs> so what's the price difference between a battery that would have a backup and not a backup? Um, so... Really, it's not that much difference um, depending on what products you use. Obviously, there are a lot mm. of smaller batteries out there where it's just not even an option. But mm. then a lot of them is just like an extra extra box that you'd buy on it, which may be anywhere from five hundred to to a thousand, two thousand bucks for for that difference. But it depends on the battery product you're buying. Like every company is now diving into their own ecosystem of of products. So mm. you've really got to know that when you're buying a, a product, that it's going to help you with that future ecosystem as well. So. Right. And would you say that most customers that do go into a battery actually are interested in the backup or they don't care? I think most want the backup. It's pretty cool, isn't it, to, to be able to put your aircon on and watch Netflix while your neighbours are <laughs> sitting over there with their candles out. Like it's, I mean, if you're buying a battery, you want you want the blackout. Like, and considering, like I said, it's it's anywhere from 500 to 2,000 max, but even then 2,000 is pretty rare that, for that sort of thing. Um, it's a small price to pay to be sort of sipping lattes while everyone's sitting there in the cold. <laughs> no, you should invite your fr uh, friends over and your neighbours for a barbecue. Or you could stand at the window going, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got that. When it comes to panels, it's a black box on the roof. Aren't they all the same? Um, there's definitely differences in panels and, and differences in manufacturers. There's, there's been a lot of panel companies come and go throughout through, through Australia. So you really want to stick with like they, – they do – all look the same really there's different colors and things like that but it's it's less about the looks of panels and more about the, the companies behind them 
you want to make sure that you're getting companies that will honour their warranties. All the warranties now are 25, 30 years plus, but how many of the panel manufacturers have been around for 25, 30 years? So, yeah, there, there's definitely uh, things to watch out for with panels and not just buying the cheapest one because that's, that's where you may run into a problem in the future when they just pump out however many gigawatts of panels and get them all off the, off the shelves and then go bust and then you can't claim any warranties anyway. So mm. so what product do you pick? So we, we like Sun Powers and Trinas. So they're both, so Sun Powers first, uh, they, they've been in the, the solar panel game longer than anyone else currently in the market. So they've been through all the, all the ups and downs of the industry. They're, I think they've been around for 35, nearly 40 years now in the, in the solar game. So just a very reliable panel and always been very good with their their warranty supports and things like that. That's They'll, a US product, is it? That's an American company, yeah. Yes, so. right, right. Okay. And what about the inverter solution? I mean, there is the microinverter, there's the string inverter. Do you do both and what's the diff? We do do both. Um, look, I, I personally would recommend a microinverter solution for the panel level monitoring, for the lack of downtime if anything was to go wrong, things like that. It's just it's just such a great solution, um, ease of install, things like that. Um, string inverters can be good if you use quality products, but then you have a, a centralized point of failure. If anything was to ever go wrong with that product, you've got no solar at all for, for the duration of time that that's out. So obviously, luckily, if you've got it installed by us, we have a strong after sales team. So we'd be there within a week to get that product back up and running and get it diagnosed and get it going. But if you're with a company, like a cheap company that you went with the cheapest price and you inverted dies. You could be without it for weeks, months if you can't get a hold of them while you're trying to get a hold of another company, things like that. So, Do you yeah. often get calls from uh, cheaper systems that have failed and they ask you to go and fix it? It's half, half the calls I get in the office is people saying, oh, I can't get in contact with my, my installer, blah, blah. Can you come and help me? And that's that's where we send our, our support team out there to go and sort of fix these ones. But yeah, it's 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 sort of a tricky road for them at that point because if it's a crap system and installed poorly, then we're going to be hesitant to to put our name to rectifying that. Mate, you know. is sometimes it beyond repair? There's definitely systems that are beyond repair, um, but it's it's not necessarily that's beyond repair. I think all systems could be repaired. It's just if it's been installed poorly, there may be a lot of work to do to get that system up to code and up to scratch, so because that we, we feel comfortable saying that we've repaired it. Because if you touch it, then from the electrical code, you actually take responsibility. So if you only fix what the problem is, but there's lots of other slightly illegal ways of how they cut corners, then you suddenly got your responsibility. Well, that's right. We're the, we're the last person on site there. So if, even if we were just to fix one plug or something mm -hmm. like that, and then there's all these other problems with the how the rail has been installed or... Uh, mm. other plugs or it's not been earthed properly, things like that, then we're liable for those things. So we need to make sure that when we fix a system, we we fix it and we, we know exactly what's going on with that system. But that means if it was installed ch poorly and cheaply, then sometimes you've got to look at it and go, it's too much. Run. We, yeah. We can't fix this. That's right. Mm. Well, hopefully somebody learns a lesson then. That's, that's the main reason to go for a quality company. Mm. So we've got the inverter, we've got the panels, you say go quality. What about the rails underneath? Nobody can see them. Who cares? Oh, I think rails need to be quality as well, definitely. Like we're, we're in Newcastle, which very nice beach town. There's a lot of nice properties by the beach. If you have sort of uh, poor, poor railing, things like that, the salt's just going to eat it up, things like that. So you've you got to make sure that you're going with a, a quality framing provider. Um, another reason is we use a company called Schleder for all our framing. They have a 25-year product warranty which goes nicely with our 25-year panel warranty. So we know when we put that system up, the whole system is going to last 25 years, not just the panels and then maybe the framing breaks after 10 years and you have to replace that with the same panels. It just doesn't make sense. And Schleder's German, isn't it? Schleder's German, yeah. <laughs> um, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you've been really in solar for about a decade. But yep. one decade earlier, we were sitting at one and a half kilowatt systems. What are you installing nowadays? Oh, I think the average system size is anywhere from 7 to 13.2 on the roof. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a lot bigger than it used to be. We still install some smaller ones, a lot of add-ons, things like that, but generally new systems are, are going up, but homes are bigger and consume a lot more electricity. They're, um, yeah, the, the feed-in tariffs are nothing now, so you, you need to make sure that you're using your solar. Let's say 
I've decided I want to get two EVs. I've got a normal house with lots of utilization of electricity. Do you get situations where the roof isn't actually big enough to support the system? Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's there's loads of like you, you could put solar on all aspects of the roof, but there's only like the northeast west is going to be where you're going to get your, your most sort of generation from there. You're, you're getting sort of efficiency losses and things like that just based on where we are in the world. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you could definitely not have a, a large enough roof for solar. Absolutely. And what do you do in those cases? Try and put a more efficient panel on or something? Um, yes, yeah, so you could use a more efficient panel or sometimes you may even go a smaller panel that you could fit more of them on there. So like obviously panels are getting bigger and bigger. The the, the panel technology is not really changing. The cell technology is not really changing. They're just making the panels larger. So in that case, you may be able to go to a slightly smaller panel, an older, say a 400 watt instead of a 440 watt, and you might be able to actually fit an extra two panels on there. So each customer is is going to be different, and that's why we have a sort of quite a dynamic design process in in house. So, so you're saying you're doing like a bespoke solution, or what? What does a- that mean? Absolutely, bespoke solution for for every customer. So if someone comes to see us for a quote, they're going to get a quote tailored to their needs. So reviewing their electricity bills, asking about their electricity consumption, things like that. We don't just sort of slap a package deal on and away you go. This is what you get. And what about if they got like 11, 12-year-olds who now become teenagers? Do you take that already into consumption uh, calculations going forward where they're going? Or Well, I mean, I know personally when I was a teenager, I used to sit at home and play video games all day with the aircon cranking when I was in Darwin. So I can imagine if you've got teenagers coming, you need a plan for that additional energy use. So <laughs> Okay. And you, you'll provide that, do you, in your calculations? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Like we don't look at it that much, but we will look at this is a solution that's going to be on there for the next 25 years. Is this going to be a large enough system for you as you grow and you, you get, say, for example, you electrify the rest of your home, you get your big hot water tank and or your heat pump or your EVs, things like that. Like you need to plan for these things from day one rather than trying to add to it later because you, you want to get it done once and get it done right. So with other words, if I tell you that I'm thinking of getting an EV, then you're going to possibly add a couple of extra panels to my system design, is it? Oh, if, there, if there's room on the roof, then yeah, like your, your electricity bills show your history. Mm. If you then tell us I'm, get, I'm getting an electric car, that's going to add to your energy consumption. So we need to make sure that we're meeting that. Do you ever get customers who maybe don't really believe in solar and wonder all about it and or maybe a bit critical or something like that? Um, yes, we, we definitely do. We get some customers that have probably been burnt in the past by by other companies that maybe have just sold them the, the the cheap nasty solution and and sort of run away and now they've been left with this system that doesn't work and things like that so that's where we, we come in and sometimes it's quite difficult to get them to, to believe in in the process again and and give them mm. the, the right way of doing solar and, and give them the right attitude to that they're, they're happy with the solution going forward but ge- generally with those customers, once once we've installed and they've gone through the process, they're normally quite happy and we normally get some really good referrals and things like that from those customers. So, oh, Is that a big part of your business? Um, I think that's probably nearly half of our business is, is word of mouth. Like obviously HCB haven't been in, in the game for as long as they have in the Hunter region that we've got so many systems out there that people will be ringing up and um, basically just, oh, I've got your, your number from so-and-so and, and this, you did a really good job there. I like the panels you put on that place. And that's where a lot of our work comes from. So, um, what's your Google Star review? Google Star, we're we're five five well, four point nine, but yeah, that's pretty high. Yeah, four point nine hundred fifty reviews. Uh, oh, so, something we're trying to chase a bit more <laughs> of. We, we don't have a process in place yet to ask people, so trying to get that going. So you want to go from four point nine to four point nine nine, do you? Four point nine nine. We're probably already four point nine nine if we go into it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So you're talking always about quality product, that you prefer quality product in your solar systems. Uh, What's the definition of a quality product? Um, So a quality product, again, comes back to things like the the companies behind the product. So as we we know, there's there's so many companies that have come and gone from Australia. You want to not just the installation company like HCB to be quality and deliver quality work. You also need the products to be backed by sort of a long warranty things like that, the strong Australian-based tech support, things like that. Like they're, they're all things that can be easily overlooked, but when you do have an issue with a, a product that doesn't have those things, you're wishing that you had that sort of quality tech mm. support, quality warranty service, all that sort of thing. So we, we, we won't actually sell products that don't 
meet those criteria. So if they don't have an Australian-based tech support, if they don't have a strong warranty support, things like that, we, we won't sell them because it'll make our life difficult if there is any, ever any problems. So it's it's a liability for our business. And what uh, accreditation or qualifications do your installation teams have? So our, our electricians are CEC accredited for solar and battery. Um, basically, you can't do it if you you can't install solar and battery if you're not accredited. So, mm. yeah. Any other training you guys do to kind of keep them really on top of what's going on? So then they need to have the work uh, the working from heights definitely. Like mm. that's obviously number one. Everyone's running around on the roof if they're they're not mm. trained to be on a roof. Then yeah, they they can't be up there. But uh, do you kind of go to any special training that some of the manufacturers put together or things like that? So part of having the CEC accreditation is you, you need to keep up your continuous professional development. And so the, all the installers on site for, to maintain their accreditation, they need to to do additional training every year to do, stay on top of that. And so a lot of that training comes from the manufacturers' webinars and things like that, releases on new products, installation guidelines. Mm. Like that. So that's where they actually get their their points every year to be able to stay accredited. Now, let's say, um, can you explain to me a little bit the installation process? So I go to you, I get a quote, I like the quote, I say, go ahead. What happens next? So from the minute you sign the quote, we'll, we'll be in contact with you to let you know that, yep, thank you so much for going with HCB. Um, we're going to put you through the design process now and, and begin ordering materials. It's normally a four to six week process for us. Um, we just have a bit of a, a backlog. So we, we aim for within four to six weeks from the time you signed the quote that you will, you will have your system on your roof. And, and during those four to six weeks is when we have our in-house design team design the system, make sure it's going to work to the exact specifications provided by the salesman. Um, we'll be in touch with you if there's any changes that need to be made, to, that need to be made. but it's, it's very rare that there are any changes at all that are required. And then once we have the design sorted, the uh, grid connection applications approved from Ausgrid or Essential, whichever region we're working in at the time, then we'll be giving you a call to say, hey, we're coming in a couple of weeks to put the system on your roof. You're happy to go. And is it a one day or how long does it take? Uh, most systems will be installed in one day. Um, obviously, as I said, systems are getting larger and larger and big 10 kilowatt system and a battery could take a day and a half. So the, um, that'll all be outlined in that phone call to you initially to go, hey, this is a larger system. Do you have a day and a half spare for our team to be on site? Okay. I always hate when I have tradesmen and they leave all the crap behind, the boxes and, and, and the cables, and then I become their cleaning lady. Absolutely not. That, that would never happen on HTB site. So we will take all our rubbish with us. We'll, we'll be wiping down the – I mean, it's, it's kind of annoying that all the nicest looking battery products and inverters are white because it leaves fingerprints everywhere. So our guys have packs of sugar soap in the car ready to wipe it all down when they're finished because there's nothing worse than fingerprints on a nice white inverter. So – we, we take care of all of that. So it's a sparkling result? Sparkling. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Customer support. Um, I've spoken on that previously and all that. Um, I think it's a little bit underrated because some people don't realise that things can go wrong with solar. So if I have a system from you, it stopped after two years for whatever reason, what happens next? Um, so if, if uh, for any reason you had any problem with the system installed by us, you get straight on the phone to us. Um, we'll, you'll be put through to our service team and our service team will have someone out there as soon as possible, generally within a couple of days to, to get onto that and, yeah, get that going for you again. But what happens if the manufacturer says, oh, I haven't got a spare part here at the moment, it's still stuffed? What do you do then? Are you do jump proactive or bad luck? So, no. So a lot of the time we actually have stock in the warehouse and so if a manufacturer doesn't have a part, we will negotiate with the manufacturer that we use our own stock and get that product working again for the customer and wait. And we'll, we'll just be without the stock until the manufacturer sends it to us. That's not a problem for us. Mm. So. Mm. You got any example which really happened in real life where somebody could have been very cranky, but you actually made them happy? Yeah, we, we've had it happen a few times. With uh, we, we used to sell a lot of a certain inverter brand and we, we still have a lot of stock of that brand. And um, we, we don't actually sell too much of it anymore, but... We did have a, a one recently where basically the inverter had failed. There was a delay on this stock arriving into Australia and we had the stock in and we negotiated a deal with the company where we sent a technician out the next day and actually put the inverter on the wall, got it working and we waited like two, two three months for the new one to come in. But yeah, it didn't bother us. So. And the customer was? Customer was stoked. <laughs> they had, they had it up and running again. They didn't even know about the delays. So like th there's no need to trouble them with, oh, this isn't coming, this isn't coming. We just got it done. They, they didn't think anything wiser of it. 
So you were the duck just sailing smoothly across the water and underneath you were paddling like Underneath mad. we're paddling like mad, trying to get it going. <laughs> Phones. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nowadays, really getting good servers and good and good tradesmen is really a problem, isn't it? What about you getting good staff? Is that a problem nowadays? It's difficult when you're trying to expand, but we've got a really good team at the moment. Like the the team is is absolutely solid. The guys all know what they're doing. Like all our guys have been with us for a few years now. So well, we do have a, a new first year, new green guy. So we've got to train him up to the, the standards. But we're, the the electricians have all been with us for a few years now, and they're all just very good quality. Now. Sometimes you get a very eager sales guy who sells the system for a certain price. And then when the crew comes to install, they actually realize maybe the switch put has asbestos in it, or you can't actually fit as many panels as he thought because there's a skylight there and whatever. What do you do in those cases? So as I touched on before, we, we have such a stringent in-house design team that the majority of these issues are picked up well before the team are there four weeks before the team are, wet, uh, team are there. And so if there's any sort of discrepancies that we're maybe not sure about, I generally, like me personally, will go to the site and, and check these things out well before the installation. So, yeah, it's, it's very rare, rare we miss things. Um, on the odd occasion that we do miss things, um, then, as I said earlier as well, the, the guys are so well trained that they can pick these things up and let us know straight away. They'll immediately look for an alternate location for a panel, things like that. Um, the other benefit of using a system like Enphase, for example, with microinverters is it's quite a flexible system. If there is a spot that you can't change it, it's not like a string inverter where they all have to be facing the same orientation. You can mix and match and you can actually come up with new solutions quite quickly. So, Okay. Now, what about if um, you pick the wrong phase on the switchboard and the three phase is more expensive and you gave me a fixed price? What do you do then? Oh, I think we'd have to wear that. That's that's if if something like that like that has come up and uh, salesman missed it and I've missed it and the guys go to site and they go, oh, it's the the common one is uh, the salesman thinking it's three phase when it's actually two phase. That's probably the 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 most common thing you'll mm -hmm. see. Um, in, in that case, there we will quickly swap all the stock out that we need, but there won't be any additional cut charge to the customer because that that's our mistake. We've we've missed that and we'll wear it. And does the customer possibly find out about it or you just basically just get on with it? No, so th there's obviously a discussion with the customer if they're expecting a three-phase thing. like that. I mean, the, the customer doesn't, most of them don't really understand the difference between single and three-phase, but if there's any changes to a job, the customer will be informed and we'll give them a call and we'll let them know that the system is slightly different to the quote in terms of performance. They're still going to get the same amount of panels. They're still going to get the same amount of inverters or microinverters or an inverter. Like We'll, we'll make it work. The, it fits the quote they were given. Excellent. Most people nowadays go solar because of the financial consideration, but I don't know if you've got kids or so, but, I mean, the whole climate change thing does seem to be real because it is getting hotter in summers and stuff like that. Um, how much is the whole environmental aspect uh, playing a role in solar and people installing it? Um, there, there's definitely a massive factor in it. Like one of the biggest things for me is I'm, I'm a massive believer in we need to do more to, to sort of stop climate change and Solar and battery is probably one of the easiest ways we personally can do that. Mm. If, if we can install it on our house, we can help with that. A lot more customers are starting to think about that now as well. So um, people are th – these are the customers that will go for the quality straight off the bat because they don't want to have a system that gets pulled off in five, ten years to go to landfill. They're, they're, they're already thinking about that as well, which is another reason why we prioritise quality because then that system is not going to contribute to a problem that, that is growing. I hear about this stuff called smart home. I don't think I'm smart enough to understand what smart home means. What is it all about? I think you're smart enough, Marcus. You're, you're German, German engineering, all that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get easily um, confused at my age. <laughs> so what's yeah. a smart home? Um, smart home is just basically sort of you can, like obviously you've got apps for everything nowadays. There, there's now going to be an app for your home in the future. You're going to control everything through your smartphone. You're not, you're not going to have switches in your house one day probably. There's just going to be everything on your phone. You'll turn everything off, everything on timers. Um, in terms so if of, I lost my phone, I wouldn't bloody be able to turn the light off, is it? Well, I mean, in the future, it'll probably be <laughs> embedded in your body somewhere, so <laughs> you won't have to worry about lo losing it. But, <laughs> but I mean, what does it all mean for solar and the renewables and you guys installing stuff? So, so in the current market, like um, sort of all, all the different sort of solar brands and inverter suppliers, they're all – 
marching down this path to creating their own ecosystem of smart home devices. So your EV charger, your hot water controllers, your load controllers, your all that sort of stuff, and they're all they're all pushing down and trying to just. They they I think they're all going for the future market potential of every customer they sell to. So when when they create a product, you're not just buying solar now, you're buying something that can be added a battery to later that works specifically with that brand and then an EV, EV charger that works with that brand and then a controller and all things to make your day-to-day life easier and make your products work better together and, and save you more money ultimately. But if all these different manufacturers go off with all their different little infrastructures and they all work with each other but don't work across, then we're in the old VHS versus beta game. Is that what's happening or are they getting onto a kind of common language? No, I think there was a period where there was a common language and there was a lot of sort of um, interoperability, but now it seems like a lot of the brands are, are moving away from that and they're, they're just going out on their own. They just want to develop their own products and, and go with that. So it's really important to do your research now before you sort of go down a, a product path because you you may, may be sort of limited to your choices later on. Right. Okay. Got that. I'll pick a solar system. I'll pick a medium one. And then I want a battery. I'll pick another company for that. And then I'll go, oh, smart home's coming. Oh, who could do that for me? Is that the best way to go forward? Um, probably not. Just as I, as I was saying before, because of these ecosystems, things like that, you really want to sort of pick a company that, that you're going to work with for the next sort of 5, 10, 15 years as, as more products come out that allow more cool things to be able to be done in your home you want to you want to work with a company that's across those things and ready to provide them so you, you may only need a solar system now you you should be thinking about a battery already so when you're buying the solar system you have an idea in mind right i want a battery in this many years that's going to complement my needs i can't afford it right now but i need to design the solar system in a way that's ready for that battery to be added on and then that's the same with in the future you'll probably buy an ev that's the way the world's going so you'll want to company that can provide an EV that fits into that solution as well, EV charger, sorry. Mm, so. Yeah. So with other words, the company that I pick now, I'm actually going to have like multiple dates with that company, isn't it? It's not just a one-night stand. Oh, well, if, if we impress you enough on the first night, then I hope you keep coming back. So that, that's what we want to try and do. And so we want to work with you for a long time. All right. Maybe I shouldn't have used that term. <laughs> sorry, darling. All right. How do you handle customer complaints? Um. Do you get any? We we do get some. I mean, we're, we're not perfect. Um, there, there's definitely always opportunities for learning uh, from customer complaints, and that's that's primarily how I see them. If if a customer is complaining and and it's most like it's it's completely warranted, um, they they're not just sort of some grumpy person having a bad day. Then yeah, that that's an opportunity for us to learn and improve as a business uh, in how in how we handle that customer and and get them back on a, on our good side or we get back on their good side, um, but then how we can take that forward into making sure that we don't have that same issue crop up. So I look at it as an opportunity to improve. So give me a sample where somebody maybe wasn't that happy and what you did about it. So we, we actually had a good one not too long ago where we were putting in a hot water controller for a guy and um, essentially the, it'd been sort of a, there was a few different people involved in the quoting process and Sort of, I was actually the one that went out to go and do it just because we were very busy at the time, and so I jumped back on the tools and did did the whole job. And I, I realised that there was missing a part to actually make it work. And through the process, uh, the customer got quite annoyed. They'd been waiting for this product and things like that. And I ended up sort of giving them the product for free, and, and then revisiting how we quote things as well. So making sure that we've only got one person sort of dealing with that customer and things like that. Because once you start to add multiple people in that are having different conversations, things like that then the customer's hearing this from one customer. He thinks he's told someone, but then there might not be communication within the, the office itself. So, yeah, that, that was how we, we learned from that one. Okay. And happy customer? He is end. now, yeah. He's, he's given me quite a few referrals since. So, he's, yeah, we're, we're good mates now. He calls me but he once a week to, to ask me questions. So it's good. <laughs> okay, great. I'd love to put solar on my house, but I got this stupid tree from next door which is shading part of my roof for part of the day. Is it worth getting solar? Um, yes and no. If it's if it's only shading part of your roof, then we can de- design a system that'll work around that. You're still going to get benefits from the, the solar during the, the parts of the day where it's not shaded. You'd probably look more towards a, a microinverter solution or an, op- or an optimized solution so that even if there's partial shade on some of the panels, the rest of them still perform 
Um, again, that, that comes back to the bespoke design process where we'll look at it and we'll go, look, there's a bit of shading here. We can, we can see it and we'll talk to the customer about it and let them know. But ultimately, if you're still getting sun on there, you're still going to benefit from solar. What products do you use? Um, feel free to man- mention a couple of brands, the inverters, the panels that you specifically recommend, why you think they're good ones. What's the good gear I can get out of HCB Solar? So what we use a wide variety of, of brands and products. Like Personally, if, if it was up to me, I'd put premium Maxion sun power panels and, and end-phase microinverters on every house. But obviously, the, the, the way the, the world is at the moment, people, people can't afford these high-end premium solutions. So we offer other products as well so that we can cater to all, all customers and provide like, uh, a comprehensive quality solution but still yeah, still meet their budget requirements. So we, we have sun power panels as our premium panel. We, we've brought in the trainers as well because they're, they're a quality panel too. They've been in the Australian game for a while but they are on the cheaper side so you can help bring the system price down quite a lot by going to that cheaper panel. For inverters, we, we primarily use Enphase Micro Inverters for, for all the benefits I've mentioned before, the, the uh, AC voltage on the roof is, is a lot safer they're modular they're expandable it's quite easy to to install um, but then we also use products like phonius and um, sma we use solar edge here and there in between we have a quite a large fleet of solar edge people that we still deal with and and part of that ecosystem again is we're still adding on to their systems mm. from five ten years ago so mm. yeah what about the racking the racking we only use Schleder, uh, as previously mentioned it's just a a strong uh, manufacturer. They've been around for a while, German, so I, I know you like them. But then also they come with a 25-year guarantee. So that's that's primarily why we use it because both our panels that we use have 25-year warranty. So if I'm in the Hunter in Newcastle, why should I use HCB Solar? Um, well, I mean, as we've discussed previously, there, there's plenty of choices out there for solar, for battery, things like that, but ultimately you, you want to pick a company that's going to be around for a very long time. They're going to give you a quality system. Like in a perfect world, you would buy your solar system and not have to worry about it ever again, but it is in a perfect world. Do you want to be able to have someone you can call that's going to be there for the life of that system? And so when we sell you a system, it's going to last 25 plus years. You want to be able to call us at any point in those 25 plus years and go, hey, there's something not quite right or hey, I want to add on to this or mm. anything and we'll be there. So if I have a problem on a Saturday, I notice my solar stopped and I leave a voicemail message on HCB Solar's phone, when are you guys going to ring me back? Most likely Monday morning, but if it's uh, urgent, it'll go through to either myself or Logan and we'll be able to get there, for example, if you've got a power outage. I know Logan will like to pick up the phone and, and help out. Do you Have you seen any issues with cheap stuff where actually the isolator was burned or the panel was burned and there were really serious risks for people because they went cheap? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, there, there's, I think back a few years ago, there was the really cheap isolators that were floating around and basically they, they used to get installed without weather shields, mm. things like that, which would protect them from the sun. Obviously, it's just a plastic box and the Australian sun, plastic and sun don't really mix well together. So the, the plastic cracks, water gets in there, it's DC voltage, just starts arcing. You can't turn solar panels off when the sun's out. So, yeah, it just creates a, a fire straight away. Right. And so my advice is don't go too cheap, is it? Don't go cheap, yeah. Get, get a system that's going to be installed correctly. Um, obviously, DC isolators are actually being done away with now. They're, they're not a requirement anymore. So if you've got a good installer, they, they probably won't do that. They'll probably go with the, the disconnection points, which is plugs under the panel. But um, even if they are still using a DCI set and you've gone with a quality installer, it will be installed correctly with weather shield to protect it. Um, mm. Now, you manage teams, don't you? Yep. Um, that needs a bit of leadership. Yep. How do you handle that? Um, like it's, a, it's an every day is a learning process. So I've obviously I've been managing a team directly for, I mean, since probably 2019, I've been in the field managing teams. Probably easier when you're in the field managing teams because you're there and you can oversee everything and see exactly what's happening. It's been a massive learning opportunity the the last sort of six, seven, eight months learning how to manage from the office and and try and sort of impart wisdom over the phone. That's probably the hardest thing and not being able to just show people how to do things. But as I said earlier, I've got a really good team of guys that really, really get stuck in and want to learn as well. So, yeah. Does a happier team 
means better outcome for the customer? Oh, of course. If if uh, if the team's not happy, they're not going to do good work because they're going to be running around the site and whinging and moping and not caring about the job. They're just going to want to get it done and go home and, and they, they don't want to do a good job because why, why do they care? Whereas and so if, how are you making sure they are happy? Um, well, one thing, the, the boys get bacon eggs every Friday, so that, that helps keep them happy. <laughs> but um, no, on a serious note, we... Um, we have monthly toolboxes where we, we discuss any concerns and, and things like that. We, we bring up any opportunities for improvement. Um, we, we listen to the guys and see what they have to say. And we, we just, yeah, we, we've got a very good relationship with, with the guys where they can come, come to me with anything. So try, try to always be there for them. And then that reflects into a better outcome for the customer? Absolutely. Like, like you said, if it's a happy team, it's going to be a happy customer because the team are going to want to do a good job. I drive sometimes around and I see some houses and the solar panels made them really look ugly. Can solar panels be sexy? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we um, we offer all black panels and we offer all black rail. We offer black weather shields for isolators on the roof. We, we try and make it look super sexy so that when you're driving around, you look at it and you go, that is a nice solution. So absolutely we can. So I can ring HCB Solar and say I want sexy solar, is it? He rings HCB Solar, so you want <laughs> sexy solar, and we'll, we'll drum it right up, sexy solar package. <laughs> okay, no worries. I want that on a special. Yeah. <laughs> I'll well, put it together. <laughs> Anthony, I must say, um, lots of learning for me here today, and uh, if I'd been a hunter, I would definitely pick HCB Solar. Awesome. Can't wait to have you. <laughs> See you, Thank Marcus. You. See ya. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.